Jason Witten made up with for a huge mistake with the biggest play of the game. A 16-yard strike from Tony Romo. The game winner with 18 seconds left. The Cowboys 28-27 and with the victory in Detroit take the NFC East and a first-round bye in the postseason. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, NFL.com's Pat Kerwin. Glad to be with you on the Subway postgame show. And Pat, Detroit had every chance to win this game. A missed 35-yard field goal from Jason Hansen. A fumble recovery that they didn't pick up on that last drive. But what this game says more than that is about this growing thought and this growing legend that is Tony Romo. Yes, it does. And it reminds me of my days at the Jets when we had to face Dan Marino and Jim Kelly. And it's really hard to finish these guys off. And 14 points in the fourth quarter by Romo. The last drive was tremendous. Two minutes to play in the game. No timeouts. Got to go the length of the football field. Two or three critical passes. And, of course, the game winner to Witten. What great composure. This guy had himself in, in really difficult third down situations, was able to see where to you know, put the football. And then he had a guy named Marion Barber. Not the great runner today, but when you combine his running and his receiving, you have over 100 yards and three touchdowns. The other parts of Marion Barber was every single time you needed a third down, he was the dump off receiver that picked up that That's third right. down, and especially key on that last drive. By the way, Tony Romo now 17 straight games with at least one touchdown pass. That's a new Cowboys record. The other part to this, and we talked about about this on our way up here to, yes. to break this down, uh, was the fact that people were during the game and people are going to look in the stat sheet and all that stuff and say T.O. wasn't a factor. Jason Witten had 15 catches because T.O. was a factor. I, I know. The cameras did a great job of capturing uh, or attempting to capture T.O.'s emotions. He looked a little frustrated, but I thought he had himself in control. In the old days, he would have lost it a little bit. But the way they designed their coverages for T.O., it provided the opportunities for Witten, which he took advantage of 15 receptions. I think the last, that might be the record from 25 years ago. Great day for Romo Witten. The guys in the cylinders, we call it. The guys on the inside. You start now coming inside to defend them you'll see T.O. have another big day. With what you've seen from Dallas over the last couple of games, a sluggish start in this one and the game against the Packers where they came out great and the defense played well for a little bit at the beginning and then gave up some points, but the offense was all over the Packers' defense. When you look at this Dallas team, is there any doubt in your mind that they're the second best, maybe closing the gap? Yeah, with the I'll give it to you. I think they're, they are the second best team in the NFL right now, and I think they're going to land up meeting in uh, Phoenix against the New England Patriots for the World Championship. And they have a quarterback. This game reminds me so much of the Buffalo game. Yep. Another game we talked about when they should not have won the game, but it's the presence of the quarterback and the an idea of what they want to do with the football down the field. And nobody, and I think it starts with Wade, real relaxed on the sideline. Nobody panics in Dallas. They know they're good. Give them one more chance, they're going to beat you. People who are Detroit fans watching this game are going to say, oh, this is the same thing. It's why it's we're not, Detroit though. fans. But, but that's what I was going to it, right. I mean, this is a team that's in this game, and they should have lost it. Now, having said that, it may be the same Detroit team if they go out the next three weeks and get blown out. That's a different story. But when you look at this team going forward, for next season, because this one's pretty much right. out the window with the tiebreaker. Well, a, a great tribute to the, the fortitude of the Detroit Lions. Their season's kind of falling apart. They lose Roy Williams. He can't play today, and they generated terrific offense. I think the future is bright for Detroit. I, I still don't know about the backup quarterback, a la who's the future quarterback. You can't go with Kitna for a few more years. You'll get next year out of him, but after that, you better have your guy groomed as to what you're going to do. I thought the running game came alive. The too. running game was huge, over 150 yards. Uh, Kitna... Uh, again today, or at least today, he wasn't even sacked till the last play yeah, of the game. Let me make a point on that. Here's what Detroit did today. They won the time of possession. They won the turnover battle. They won the sack battle. They won the third down battle. Lost the game. But there's a lot to build on here. I felt bad for Rod Marinelli. The challenge for the Detroit football team, Rod Marinelli will, will do his best, but the challenge is finish this season strong. Today took their heart out a little yeah, bit. It'll be tough when they go to San Diego next week, a team who today got a huge comeback victory at Tennessee and will have a lot of momentum going home next week. Folks, for more on this game or any other here in Week 14, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Pat Kerwin, I'm Jason Horowitz. Cowboys are 12-1. Take care, folks.